Howard University swim team is ending it with a splash. After their historic NEC championship win last year, the first in 30 years and a record-breaking title this season, we sat down with members of the team to talk about black representation in competitive swimming and how to keep that black history alive. My name is Nicholas Askew. I am the head coach and director of Howard University Men's and Women's Swimming and Diving and Tennis. Our country has a very ugly history with Blacks, minorities, and aquatic spaces. And, you know, one of the things that's really important to our program and that's been to, instilled in me from childhood is being able to know that all spaces should be open for all people. And one of the things that we continue to work on in our program is making sure that we are the representation for those people who may be still subscribing to the myth that black people don't swim, may still have a fear of the water, that this is a space that they can be in and the spaces they can be comfortable in. It's really saddening to know that we are the only HBCU that has a swim and dive program, especially given the rich history of HBCUs that had competitive swim and dive programs in the past. Howard and all other HBCUs were founded during times where people that were not white could not get a higher education. So we're happy to be a space for anyone that wants to have an education at an HBCU. And the best thing ever is to be able to compete in your sport. Um, of swimming and diving at this level. So um, it's, it's, again, something we're hoping that the conversation really stirs around within alumni circles um, and just the, the culture in general that more HBCUs should, should have programs. Hi, my name is Zuzu Eze, and I'm a sophomore psychology major, political science minor on the Howard Swim and Dive team. I would say that the main thing that got me to go here was actually when I first talked to Coach Nick and also Coach Salim. It was a really fun conversation. It was on Microsoft Teams and I was cracking up. And then when we went and I, uh, my mom and I, we came to actually visit the school. I just remember walking around and it felt like home. But it was definitely really nice to just see a bunch of people that, you know, we don't all share the same mindset and we don't have the same thought process, but we're much more similar and I feel more connected to them than I have anybody else. So I would say that this being an HBCU definitely um, contributed to my motivation to come here. You're going to push off the wall, bring your hands down to the side. I feel more comfortable knowing that Coach Nick has been at Howard and has graduated from Howard and swam here and then chose to come back and be here all this time because when he shares experiences and stories, whether it's at a meet or at practice, like hype us up or just to, you know, just instill some type of knowledge, I don't feel like he's just talking my ear off. Like I know that it's coming from a good place. It's coming from like he, this guy actually knows what he's talking about. It's heartwarming to, to get little notes and emails either, you know, from, from young people or young people at heart saying that we've inspired them. We love winning, you know, championships and all those, those great things. But at the end of the day, we know that it's even bigger than just winning championships and, you know, breaking records. It's about making an impact in this life that others can be inspired to do great things with. Uh, I wouldn't say I was planning to break the meat record. I actually didn't know what it was. I thought, you know, if this is me about to do the 50 freestyle, then I'm going to go out there and I'm going to do it to the best of my ability. Um, and I really just wanted to do well for my team. And I also really wanted to break 23 seconds pretty badly because I had an instance last year on the relay where I'd broken it. But I was like, okay, like, let's just do it from a flat start. Like, let's just get it. One of the things I would love to see in five, 10 years in the, the black swimming, black competitive swim world is an increase in our statistics. Right now, swimming at a competitive level does not look, at, look like the diversity of the United States. And I would love to see that statistic change. And um, the only way that we're gonna be able to do that is through water safety education, is through access, and then making sure people are knowledgeable of the pathways that it could lead to. 